Hello again. Mr. Squirrel and I would like to just go over a little bit about reflecting a quadratic across the x-axis because that can get a little bit difficult to understand. It is 100% all based on the order of the wording when you are given some sort of word-based scenario and asked what the equation is or what the graph is or something like that. So I'll be doing some sketching on this Cartesian plane on the right-hand side. Totally just sketches. You'll see how wonderful my art skills are. So we're gonna do two examples and I'm gonna show you why the order of the words matter. So we're gonna find the resulting equation when our parent function y equals x squared, this quadratic, undergoes the following transformation. Now in this case, the first transformation is a vertical dilation, otherwise known as a vertical stretch of seven. So I'll take care of that first. So our everyday parent function has a vertex at zero, zero. And so if it's stretched by seven, it's gonna be quite skinny and come up like this. And so that's fine. This is just a quick sketch, right? So a really, really, really skinny parabola followed by, so that means the next thing. So what we have is we have a, a value of seven. That's what we know so far. A horizontal translation of four units to the right. So if it's a horizontal translation four units to the right, that means X minus four because of the x minus h. So what happens to my, my graph over here? Well, if we take a look at this parabola, it is going to shift to the right by four. Okay, so the, the vertex moves over to four, the points that I had over there move over to the right by four as well. Okay, then it says followed by, so the next thing is a vertical translation of three units up. So we're gonna move our whole entire parabola up by three, which is a k value of plus three. So we take our parabola and we shift the whole thing up three. So the vertex moved up by three, the points that I had moved up by three, and the entire parabola is moved up by three. And so my vertex is currently at four, three. Then it says, the last instruction says, followed by a reflection about the x-axis. So this is where it gets a little bit interesting. If the x-axis is the mirror that we're going to be reflecting across, we have to understand that the vertex will be three vertical spots away from that mirror. Really, honestly, you have to think of it like a mirror. So my new vertex will be down over here. The also, the entire parabola also now opens downwards. So the entire thing got reflected downward like this. It doesn't just reflect where the vertex is, it says a reflection about the x-axis. So the x-axis is the mirror. It is the point of reflection. That means that my entire equation gets multiplied by negative one, not just the a value. That's where the confusion tends to lie. So I'm going to have to multiply the entire equation by that negative one, which gives me a resulting equation of negative seven x minus four squared minus three, which kind of makes it look like my vertex went down. What I'd like to do is show you what happens when the words are in a slightly different order. So we're gonna do this second example here, slightly, slightly, slightly different order. A reflection about the x-axis is the first thing we're going to do. So my normal parabola, which would open upward and kind of look like this. So my parent function, which normally would look like that. The first thing I'm going to do is reflect it about that mirror, about that x-axis right there. And if that's where I'm reflecting, then I take my entire parabola and I reflect it downward on that x-axis vertex right there. And so it just reflects downward just like that. And now it's opening downward where it is or where it was because, I can't stress this enough, the mirror is the x-axis. Then that is followed by a vertical dilation of seven. So what does that mean? Well, that means that my parabola, this guy right here, gets vertically dilated or stretched by seven, which makes it very, very, very tall. Now I'm not gonna leave it drawn like that, but it does, it gets really, really tall. And so what we end up with is my vertex stays there, but now my parabola, which is opening downward because of the initial reflection, 
is tall and opening downward like this. Only then is it followed by the horizontal and vertical translations. So now what I've been asked to do in that third step is a horizontal translation of four units to the right. One, two, three, four. After that, the last one is a vertical translation of three units up. One, two, three. So now my vertex is up here. And you can see the difference between it and the other resulting graph, my vertex in the second one is up above the x-axis. My vertex in the first one is down below the x-axis. Let's take a look at the equation now. If the first thing I was asked to do is a reflection about the x-axis, then I'll put my negative. A vertical dilation of seven is the next item. A horizontal translation of four units to the right followed by the final one of a vertical translation of three units up. And so this one, my k value at the end is positive three, whereas in the previous one, multiplying the entire equation by that negative caused my k value to be negative three. And that is the confusion that tends to surround reflecting quadratics over that x-axis. If, if you're a little bit confused, watch my video again, watch what I do with the two different reflections and the two different orders in which I do that. You're welcome to contact me if you have further questions, leave a comment, like this video if it really helped you out and helped you understand those reflections. And if you're feeling up to it, why not uh, subscribe to my channel? And of course, this up here is Mr. Squirrel and he approves this video. Have a great day.